Do you know what the next trend is going to be? Neither do I. So rather than trying to speculate and guess what the next trend is going to be, I suggest that instead you write it. So today I'm going to give you five tips on how to write your next masterpiece and create the next trend. You have a story to tell, but you don't know where to start. Let me show you how to free your story. I teach you how to write and how to dig deep in your soul to release your story and make a difference in the world. Welcome to the Julia Monte channel. If we're just meeting, I am Julia Monte and I'm a women's fiction author. Also here on Fridays to give you some writing tips. So today we're going to talk about creating the next trend. So being the next trend rather than trying to figure out what is going to be hot this year and what's going to sell and what you can write uh, instead of wasting time doing that because none of us have a crystal ball we really don't know what is going to catch fire right and honestly neither do the people that write these amazing books i'm um, sorry i feel like i have hair on my face um, but neither do the people who write the the, the book that, that explodes, right, uh, in the market, they don't even know when they're writing it that that's what it's going to be. What they do know is that instead of writing what everybody else is writing, they decide to try something different, something that hasn't been tried before. And they don't know whether it's going to flop or whether it's going to actually be a hit. So, but they don't care, right? They just write it. And that is one of the things we're going to talk about, right, is just being brave enough to try something different that you really believe in and that you're not really quite sure if it's going to do well. I mean, it doesn't have to be crazy, right? Because we don't want to do something that's never, well, I don't think there is anything that's never been tried, but you don't want to do something that uh, no editor or agent will even recognize because then you'll probably just get rejected but uh and that's okay because you can get rejected many times and then find the right place right but what you want to do is write that unique story write that story that is only yours and then see what happens okay so let's start then with the very first tip so what is it uh how how are you going to create this next trend or how are you going to be the next trend the very first thing that i suggest you do is find out or figure out or think about what is different and unique about you what is it that you think is uh something that is just you. The biggest mistake that we make as writers is that we try to blend in, right? We try to be like everybody else and write what everybody else is writing or write what's successful. Uh, and actually that doesn't make you stand out. It, it, it's just another story that is very similar to everything else. Now, editors and agents like that in some way, right? They want the sameness, but they also want the uniqueness. So they want us to be different, but they also want us to be sort of the same as what's already out there. But you have to be brave enough again, right? To try something that's slightly different. So what are some things that are unique about you? Something that you like that you can translate, that you can write about um, that other people might also be interested in, right? So um, again, when you think back, you know, like Star Wars, I can't believe that Star Wars is still like something today when it was, I was a little kid, right? When it came out and when I first saw the, the same one, I never thought that like my kids would be watching different versions of the same story. Um, and he probably didn't either, right? So when he first thought about this, uh, what if he had said, no, it's too crazy to think about like this story about good versus evil in space and that there's these, you know, good guys and bad guys and, and they battle and it's just kind of a dumb story. What if he'd have thought that, right? Uh, then, you know, he, well, he and many re viewers and readers, not well, not readers, viewers, TV, uh, movie viewers would have probably missed out on something that they really liked. I mean, it's just like subculture kind of thing now, right? Uh, why? Because he was brave enough to try something different, something that he liked, something that was unique to him. And he, you know, put it out there for the world to see and the world liked it. So don't be afraid to be yourself, to be creative and to be original because it can really pay off. Okay, the second tip is to write something that interests you. So it, it could be anything, right? Whatever it is that interests you, don't like write it off and say, oh no, this is a dumb idea. Uh, because you never know. Uh, personally, I didn't understand the whole Fifty Shades of Grey book 
thing that happened. Uh, I I didn't think that the writing was all that good. I, I hate to say that on video, but I didn't think it was that good. I didn't think that um, uh, that the story was really all that unique. I mean, there's there's so many really, really good romance books, but maybe it just wasn't for me, right? It just wasn't something I liked. I didn't like the whole erotica thing. Uh, and But there are other books that actually are erotica and actually are well written. So I don't know if it was that, but anyhow, maybe it was just me. But he, obviously there were hundreds, thousands of readers, millions of readers that loved that book and it became this instant hit. Um, so, you know, again, what if that person had said, well, no, I don't really want to write about this. I'm kind of embarrassed to write this story, right? Uh, then you know, you don't want to prejudge something. You don't want to, so whatever your idea is, whatever your creativity is, uh, don't dismiss it. Write about it because you don't know. There might be a, a, an audience out there just waiting for that story. So think about what you like. Write about what you like. Don't write about what other people are writing, what other people like. The third thing is to help readers see the magic of your story. So a lot of times when we're writing something new and something different that people haven't uh, heard or haven't read before, they might not really understand like why is it so amazing? Why is it so wonderful? Uh, and you have to go out there and tell people, right? Look, this is why it's so wonderful. Uh, go out there and talk about your story. Uh, try to get reviews, try to get people talking about it. I don't know if you've noticed that sometimes things don't catch on until like enough people, right? I think uh, actually Malcolm Gladwell wrote a little book about this, right? The tipping point where there's a certain point where there's so many people talking about that all of a sudden it seems like everybody knows about it. And it happens with weird stuff. Like I, I remember um, when my kids were young and they, they wanted the, the scooters, right? Well, I grew up in the 80s with skateboards and I thought, well, and my, my mother-in-law wanted to buy them this little scooter. And I'm like, well, why would they want a scooter when they can have a skateboard, right? I mean, the skate, we don't need these little handlebars on <laughs> on our, our skateboards. We can just ride skateboards. We've learned how to balance, you know, in the 80s, it was, that was the cool thing. Who, did, who, wanted, who wanted something that was popular like way before that? Like, I don't even know. Like when were scooters popular? 1940s, 1950s? I don't know. But why bring them back, right? <laughs> In the 90s. Uh, but it enough people decided that that was cool that all of a sudden uh, more and more people were riding scooters and all of a sudden that it was a thing again, right? So instead of a skateboard, people are walking around riding with this little handlebar on, on a skateboard. Um, uh, to me, it was bizarre, right? But it, it caught on and it became a thing. And then all these fancy scooters came out and all these razors and everything, right? Uh, can fold down and just all these handlebars go up and down. It got, it got, uh, crazy. It got high tech and all this stuff. So you just never know, uh, when something is going to just take off, you have to show people, right, the magic of it. This is how, this is why it's cool. This is why it's wonderful. This is why we want to bring back this thing that was popular in the 40s and 50s, and now we want to use it again because th this was the magical thing about it. So you have to talk about it and you have to show people because sometimes they won't know, right? You can't just write something, put it out there, and then wait for it to be successful. You have to go out there and show people that it is wonderful. They really want to read this book. This story is amazing. Uh, and you have to do the work to show them that. The fourth tip is to remember that not only is your idea and the story unique, but you, right, are unique. You are the one that has to be unique. So a lot of what makes things popular or uh, become a trend is really the voice of the author, the voice of the writer, because uh, it, it shows, and it's not just, I mean, it, there's just all kinds of stuff on what, you know, what exactly is the voice and it's the way that it sounds, right? It's the grammatical, it's the language and the way that the writer uh, creates the language and all of that. So that's true, but it's more than that. It's more of the personality that comes through those words uh, where you can feel the writer in that story, the writer telling you, the way the writer tells you the story. So you have to have your own personality, your own unique way of storytelling. And if you think of all the vampire books that came out, 
uh, you know, you might think of like Twilight, but even before that, right, before we had, you know, Dracula was, a, the, I don't know if it was the first, but it, it's, I think so, maybe not, but it, it was, you know, there, there we go. We had like that voice for that time. And then we had um, interviews with a vampire. So Anne Rice, right, her, her story, the vampire comes back at that point, that story comes back. And, but it's different, right? It's a different voice for a different time period. And it became, again, a huge hit. Uh, then there were years where it were, were nothing. And then, uh, you know, then you get Twilight and the whole very romantic, uh, much more romantic than the other ones, of course. Um, and so again, it's a different, it was a different voice for a different time. So what makes your voice unique for today's time and in your story. So you, this is something that you, you have to put yourself into the story. You're into the book um, so that and it's come, so that it's coming through and so that the readers are connecting with that. And sometimes that's hard because it's like, well, I don't really know if, vo if my voice is something that readers are going to like, enjoy, want to listen to. Uh, and sometimes it's something that you have to tweak over time. Sometimes your voice grows over time. This is why writing and writing and writing writing is important right you don't you don't want to just write one story and then you know think oh I didn't do well it's something that grows over time so your voice may change over time your voice may strengthen over time um, and grow or you might actually feel more comfortable as time goes by and actually allow your voice to come out so a lot of times we try to sound like other writers and we suppress our own voice but maybe over time you actually allow that voice to come out and when it does that's when the you know the magic happens and when your story does amazing and, and you know and you become the next trend right so you want to you want to keep working on that voice you want to keep letting your voice out that whatever your unique personality is you want to continue to express that within your story okay and the fifth tip is that your story has to be relatable to a large group or a large segment of the population which to me this is the hardest right this is the hardest thing because it's uh, usually what we we do like I don't write for I don't write for mass appeal I write for a specific group but if your goal is to become the next trend that you know write the, those popular books that people love uh, you know or a lot of people love is that you need to be able to figure out right what is it that is going to that you know young people old people are going to like that men and women are going to like that you know different uh, you know just different segments of the population are going to find something that they can relate to that will make them love your story um, and like I said to me that's the hardest thing like how you know what is it about a story that gets everybody when you look at like things like Harry Potter right um, she actually managed to achieve that goal it wasn't just books for kids their adults loved it too and she she figured out right you know what what uh, something in the story that everybody could relate to that everybody liked and if you can do that right if you can if you can write a story that has this mass appeal then you have a higher chance of actually having your book be one of these super popular trend setting type of stories okay so what am i saying here that you there are a lot of things that that come into these um, best-selling trend-setting type of books right and uh can you write one i don't know right this is something that like again i think that even the people who actually managed to achieve this goal they never knew if their book was going to be a breakout book or not but what they did know is that they wrote the book that they loved. They put, they, they put their voice, their personality into the story. They wrote about things they liked or loved. And uh, then and then they wrote a story that that only they could write, right? That only they that they weren't afraid to write the story that they wanted to write. They didn't care if it was silly or whatever. They just did it. So what I think is the best strategy is just to write a compelling book, write a book that you really love, that is really full of your ideas, your creativity and your own uniqueness. And then let, you know, and then again, remember to tell people how amazing this book is because you need to do that work. You need to 
tell people and show people why this is a great book. And, um, you know, if you put in the work, if you put in the time, if you write about the book, the story that you really want to write, the story that you love, you do have a higher chance of creating maybe something that the world says, wow, this is amazing. Um, but, you know, I, to me, again, I, I don't have that goal of writing this mass appeal book. I do have a, a goal of, of writing good books and that my audience, the audience that I'm targeting, really loves. And I'm happy to achieve that. And who knows though, someday I may, it may hit a nerve and it, may, and it may become a mass appeal type of book. And if it does, awesome. Um, but my goal is always right, just to write the next best book that I can write, the most compelling book that I could write. Um, so that's what uh, I suggest that you do. And that uh, I think that that will bring you more success than just trying to write what everybody else is writing or trying to write a book that seems popular now that by the time you release your book, that trend may be gone. Okay, so uh, I hope that this has helped you and I hope that it's made you think a little bit. Uh, if this video has helped, please hit that like button and the share button and subscribe if, you don't, or if you're not already subscribed. And that way you will be notified next week when my next uh, video comes out. All right, I will see you then. Bye-bye.